my fiance wants my two houses, but wants me to sign a prenup for her inheritance. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications. A little background here is that I make around 250k a year. My fiance makes around 65k a year. We've both been divorced. I asked for a prenup protecting my existing assets. Two rental properties worth around 400k together, my retirement account, my house in which I live, existing savings account, and just sentimental things. I offered to pay for a lawyer for her and make everything earned after the wedding fair game in a divorce split. In my previous divorce, my ex took a lot that I had before we even met each other and took a lot of things with sentimental value just to hurt me. I floated the idea of a prenup and she was not okay with it. It hurt her feelings and she said I was planning for a divorce if I want a prenup. She had this idea that when we marry, everything becomes ours. We'd been dating for four years and had very few bumps, so I don't see a super high risk of divorce, but I do acknowledge it's there. Anyways, I love her and I said sure. Fast forward a couple months. Her grandmother abruptly died. Wasn't expected. Grandmother was quite healthy before, had a heart attack. Apparently, the grandmother left her entire estate to her, worth roughly 800000 Now the tables have turned, and she wants a prenup protecting these assets from me, which I was fine with, but she doesn't want to sign my prenup in return for that. Her reasoning is that her grandmother wouldn't have wanted her wealth to, quote, leave her direct family, and that there's a reason it was all to me and not my siblings or parents, end quote, and that the prenup must not have been important to me because I threw out the idea after minimal pushback. I'm at a loss here. In one regard, I'm glad we had prenup discussions because it brought out these sides of us. But I'm really wondering if this four-year relationship that has been full of nothing but love and support for each other until now is even salvageable. She is not willing to budge on her own prenup like I was. And I'm finding this whole situation very frustrating. So, am I the jerk? Okay, definitely a solid no with the jerk on this one. You say this relationship is four years in, that everything so far has been going well, but it's still understandable to have doubts, especially after having come off a divorce as well. It sounds like what you proposed was very fair, and her comeback with, well, you're just planning for a divorce at that point, can be turned right around by her saying that she doesn't want to sign a prenup. If the plan is to be married forever, then the prenup doesn't matter. But to have the kahunas to come back and say, no, now I want a prenup, but I'm not going to sign yours still, is just insane and very clearly beneficial to one side. It seems pretty clear whose interests are at heart in this arrangement. I hope they were able to come to some sort of agreement on the prenups because it sounds like their relationship was going well. But if not, that's just too much of a red flag for me personally. You're wearing a red shirt. You must know where the Oreos are. I recently moved to a new city to live with a relative for a while. Until I can find a solid good job that'll actually pay me what I'm worth, I've been doing food delivery slash grocery pickup. This happened last night around 8.30 p.m. I was taking a quick 30 minute break from driving to use the restroom, get some water and a snack, and pick up some things that were needed at my cousin's house since she's not charging me rent. I decided on the Red Bullseye store because they had everything I was looking for. I was browsing the small home appliances section, looking for a pitcher that filters water so you can use fewer water bottles. I just found the perfect one when I hear someone yelling. I have anxiety, so I'm always consciously looking and listening to make sure I can get away in an intense or dangerous situation. Thankfully, the yelling was less angry and more pure excitement. A little kid between three and six, I'm horrible at ages, ran up to me. For the cast today, we have me, little kid, tired mom, and actual employee. Little kid. Where are the Oreos? Me. I'm sorry, I don't know. Little kid is visibly confused, but you're wearing a red shirt. Why don't you know where they are? Me. Oh, I don't work here. My shirt is just red. I was also not wearing a name tag and I was wearing gray sweats and flip flops. I guess he didn't know any better, but he wasn't rude, just a confused little kid. I scanned the store to find an employee, but couldn't see one. However, this kid seemed nice enough and I still had ample time on my break, so I decided to help him hunt down the Oreos. He must not have been able to read because we were already near the snack section as the sign said. Little kid, my sister's not feeling good. We're getting Oreos to cheer her up. Me, well that's nice of you. Who brought you to the store? Little kid, my mom, my mom. She's at returns getting us a new toaster oven cause the other one doesn't work. 
After finding the actual package of Oreos, he requested double stuff so his sister would be double happy. I walked with the little kid back towards the front. His mother was still standing at customer service and looked confused that her son was with me. Little kid. I got the Oreos. The nice lady helped me, but she doesn't work here. She said her shirt is just red. Tired mom looks embarrassed. Oh, I must not have told you to look at a name tag too. Make sure you tell her thank you. Little kid. If there wasn't coronavirus, I would give you a high five. Actual employee to tired mother. Would you like me to ring that up here? Me. No, I'll pay for them. Tired mother. You can't. That's too much trouble. Me. It's okay, ma'am. I hope your daughter feels better. I didn't feel like $4 was too much to spend on a little kid that it made me laugh. Quarantine has been kind of hard on me, so having a marginally humorous experience like this made me smile a lot. I normally work with kids, so this lifted my spirits a little. Sorry if it wasn't drama-filled like every other post on this sub. You do not need to apologize at all. This was a refreshing change. A genuine, cute, innocent interaction that ended up with a happy ending. Here, today, in this brief moment on Am I the Jerk, we are free of jerks. Let's enjoy it. My boyfriend insists I should share my dream car with him. I entered my current relationship with a car I purchased while I was in college. At the time, my boyfriend did not have a driver's license or vehicle of his own. For a year, I pushed him to get his license, offered to teach him in the little banger I had, even drove him to the DMV and bought the book for his G&M license. He neglected to even open them. After getting tired of paying for repairs on this car, a 2008 Yaris, I decided to go to a dealer and trade it in for a newer car, a 2016 Juke. Again, and I offered to teach him to drive and pushed him to take the test for his G1. After almost a year of owning the new car, he finally went and got the G1 and I started giving him driving lessons. But after a year, I got a job making far more money than I had been and also saved multiple years worth of tax returns to be able to put down a down payment on the car of my dreams, a two-door Wrangler for off-roading. My boyfriend is atrocious with money. He's been bankrupt in the past, overspent on money to the point of me needing to cover 100% of the bills, often leaving me to make the choice between making a car payment or paying for groceries. We had a plan to purchase him a car with a loan he was approved for, but in his time off, spent all $15,000 of it. Frustrated, I drove to a Jeep dealer and traded the Juke for a Wrangler, making myself the sole owner of the vehicle, not wanting to have his irresponsibility affect my credit any longer. He blew up, saying that the Juke was his and that it was the car he was supposed to learn to drive in, and I was supposed to keep it and keep making payments on it so he could have a car too. Angry, I told him he wasn't allowed to drive the Wrangler, mostly because he is very neglectful on the road, and I'd upgraded to steel front and rear bumpers and didn't want him to kill someone. I made him borrow a friend's accent to learn and get his G2. I feel like the jerk for not including him on the purchase or allowing him to use it when we are in a relationship, but felt my financial responsibility deserved to be rewarded and protected. So am I the jerk? For this one, I'm gonna again have to go with not a jerk. We've all been there where someone else gets something new and shiny and we want to get to enjoy it too. But in this case, where it's a situation of a car and there have been financial issues in the past regarding his financial responsibility, I understand wanting to be hesitant towards allowing him to drive it, let alone having his name on it. Things have gone well for you two up until this point, I have to assume, and I think maybe he should just take this as a wake-up call and needing to up his game on his financial responsibility. If this is a long-term relationship and something you guys plan to continue to move forward with, this does need to be something that he needs to take seriously. And maybe this was just a way to get him to do that. My ex-wife only wants child support money so she can save for her and her new husband's other kids. My ex-wife and I are the parents of a daughter who's 17 and a son who's 15. We share custody of our kids 50-50 and we've been divorced for 13 years now. Neither of us pays child support because we have equal time with the kids and we split the costs of everything. School, medical, dental, extracurriculars. I opened up bank accounts for my kids when each was born and I have saved from the get-go. But around eight or so years ago, I came into some money because I was injured at work and I put that money into their accounts. As well as this, a relative died four years ago and I was left a sum of money that also went into the accounts for my children. The money I have now saved for them will help them tremendously in their futures, whether they go to college or not. My ex-wife remarried several years ago. Her stepdaughter is 16, she's got a nephew of her husband's that they are raising who's 14, and she has a seven and five year old with her husband. Ex-wife wanted to talk to me about college for our kids. And she told me that she and her husband had told all the kids that community college would be the most affordable option for them them and that they would get as much help as possible but a more expensive school would be tough on them. I told her that our kids would have that option if they wanted it because I'd saved a more than healthy amount for them. 
She asked me why I never told her sooner, and I told her because I was taking care of our children, and it wasn't something she needed to know. A few days after this talk, she called me, and alongside her husband said that they would like me to pay child support for our kids, so that they can save more money for their other children's futures. I told her I was not going to pay child support just so she could support the other children in her home. Her husband told me that I could always offer to split the money between all of the children. I told him I was not paying for his kids to go to college. I told them I only had a responsibility to my children. I told them that if they wanted to save more money, I would happily take the kids more if they, my kids, want to spend more time at home with me. My ex-wife called me cruel and said keeping 50-50 and paying money so our kids' siblings can go to college should be a no-brainer for me. I told her the day I have an obligation to help her support the entire household is a day in another universe where we never broke up, but we did, and she has to accept she is equally responsible for our kids as me. They both told me I was a jerk, and even though I feel like I'm crazy for asking, I must ask, am I the jerk? Edit, the courts did not order child support because I only make a little more than my ex-wife, and I was well below the threshold to determine child support in 50-50 custody cases. I have control of the money. My children are aware it is there and we have talked about it, but they are still undecided on their future plans. They do not have access to the money yet. First off, excellent father right here. Since day one, he has been saving something for his children. For his children. He's responsible for them. He wants to give them a good life. He wants everything to be a little bit easier for them. And has worked hard to give them that option. Not the other kids you went and had after you broke up. Those are not his responsibility. You have the father of those children next to you while you're on the phone who should be taking up that responsibility. I understand how the thought could enter her mind. For her, all her kids are equal and she wants them all to be supported equally. But she has to understand that that isn't the case for our poster. I don't think we're the jerk at all here. You've done a great job in doing what you had to do for your children. Apparently, I ruined Thanksgiving by telling my mom to stand up for herself. I've changed the names. My sister is 41 and I'm 36. My sister, Beth, is terminal and she has a couple of months left at most. I'm trying to make peace with it, but a part of my heart will always be broken, you know? Beth has come to terms with it and all of us are just trying to make her last days as peaceful and memorable as possible. Beth found her first husband when she was 20 and he passed in a crash a few years later. After a while, my parents introduced her to her second husband, Matt. He's some relation to my dad's friend, and Beth and Matt married, then divorced four years later. Most of my family still keeps in touch with Matt. Our family has plots in a cemetery that a lot of our late relatives, including my dad, are buried in, but Beth already says she wants to be buried in a different cemetery. Different city, too, actually. Near her late husband. Mom wasn't completely on board with this, but I thought she'd come around. So I went to Thanksgiving dinner and Matt was there as well. At one point, mom said something like how Beth always listens to me and I should talk to her about the burial plants. I told her she already knows Beth's wishes and I won't go against that. Matt then joined in the conversation and what I assume is the real reason behind all this nonsense said that they get Beth is emotional, but it's disrespectful to their relationship if she's buried next to her first husband. Mom continued to chime in saying she agrees and that cemetery is a lot further away and I should at least try to talk to her. I snapped and said, I won't be discussing this with Beth. I don't give a hoot what they think is respectful or not. She can disrespect Matt all she wants, and mom needs to grow a spine for her daughter instead of supporting Matt's demands. She was pretty mad after that and said they were just asking and I was ruining Thanksgiving dinner. It's been a couple weeks and I've got a few messages from other relatives saying I went off at my mom and Matt for no reason. I do also have other people telling me I said what I had to say. So am I the jerk? Okay, for this one, I'm going to start off by saying emotions are probably running very high for everyone in this family right now. Matt, mind your business. You're not involved. You became irrelevant after you guys got divorced. Mom, you have to respect your daughter's wishes. I know you think she's young and you're trying to do what you think is best for her and for the family, and I get that it has a lot of personal meaning to you, but this is about her. I really do hope that this is how you feel and it wasn't just Matt talking you into it. More like you were just using Matt as another excuse to get her to not do it. But I would say your daughter has already had it rough enough. Let her have her peace where she wants it.
I told my mother she's a soulless B-word who doesn't deserve her children's love. I honestly think my mother is a terrible human being, so I admit I might be biased. So I'm asking here. I, 26-year-old male, am very protective of my siblings. 19-year-old female, 16-year-old male, and 8-year-old male with special needs. Since I have basically raised them even when I was a child myself, and since becoming an adult, have become their guardian. This is due to our mother always being away for, quote, mommy time. Her way of saying going to the club, taking substances, and fooling around with whatever guy she was clinging to for free substances. Also in and out of prison. My sister, 19-year-old female, wanted to try and fix her relationship with our mother, since apparently our mother is getting better and is going through programs. I know this song and dance. She says she's better and she's real good at acting like it. Someone believes her BS. She gets in their good graces till she can ask for money to get back on her feet. Then, bam, she's gone. I warned my sister about all of this because as much as I love my sister, she's too forgiving and gullible, but also told her she's an adult now and I'm not going to stop her, but just be careful. On the day she was to meet up with her, she was too nervous and anxious to go alone, especially after not seeing her for seven years. And I could see it, so I offered to go with her as support. A very important detail is that my sister has always been a tomboy, but kind of repressed that side when we still lived with our mother since she was very abusive about it and a huge bully. Since living with me, she has gone full tomboy and is very much masculine presenting. I'm so happy she's comfortable with me that she can be who she wants. But a lot of people do think she's trans, so that's a sore spot for her since she still identifies as a woman. Well, the second we get into the restaurant and sit down, our mother's first words were, oh my god, you're not one of those transgenders, are you? With a disgusted look on her face. My sister ran out crying. I told my mother she's a soulless B-word who doesn't deserve her children's love love and is going to die unloved and alone. She called me a jerk and other names while I left. I feel like a jerk because I stooped to her level, but some part of me still thinks she deserved those words. Am I the jerk? My friend, absolutely not. I can't believe you held back at only that. Are you kidding me? I would have had way more words for her before walking out that door. She had someone who, despite all of her flaws, was still willing to help her. And she makes the choice to open her mouth and say something like that as the first thing to her. What kind of reaction is she expecting? But no, definitely not the jerk at all. You are 100% the hero of this story. Who knows where she is now, but... Good riddance. You don't need her. It sounds like you guys have a great support system on your own. I decided to plan a vacation without my husband. My husband, 33 male, and I, 30 female, have been together for nine years now. When we first started dating, we both discussed the most important thing to us, and it was traveling. Unfortunately, we just have different ideas of what traveling is. I work remotely, but I make six figures a year, so it's worth it. Plus, the benefits are amazing. I get about a month off a year in paid time off, which is almost unheard of in the US. So I usually like to take my paid time off to travel the world. My husband works for two months and then has the next month off. With every new site, we get to move to another state and that's his favorite thing. He gets paid a lot less than me, but he says it doesn't matter because he's living the dream. I used to align my vacation days with his month off so we could travel together. This is the first year that I deliberately plan my vacation days when he works. Here's why. Our first year of dating, I wanted to do something small. We traveled to some national parks and had a wonderful time. It was gorgeous and he loved it just about as much as I did. The next year, we decided to visit England. He was insufferable. All he did was complain about everything. It was a nightmare and every day he'd find something to complain about until eventually I cut the trip short and just took him home. I thought, maybe he just didn't like England. So I tried a few different countries over the next three years and he acted like a baby every single time. We went to Italy, Greece, and China, but he hated everything. I gave up and just told him to plan our next vacation. He took me to Disneyland, his hometown, Las Vegas, and Florida. Nothing outside of the continental US. I never complained about any of his vacations. I went in with an open mind, but always came home feeling a little cheated out of an experience. I mean, I haven't really gotten to enjoy one of my vacations in five years, and I feel like I'm missing out. So I scheduled my vacation for January, not one of the months he's off, and have plans to fly to France. I told him from the start this was happening, but I guess this entire time he thought I was joking. Now he's begging me not to go. He told me that he would miss me too much. 
I told him I just wanted to enjoy a vacation. And besides, I was only going to be gone for two weeks. I wasn't even going to use up my entire vacation time in France. I was going to spend the first and last week of my vacation with my husband. He threw a tantrum when I told him I was still going to go for the two weeks as my boss had already approved it. He said I might as well stay in France and then called his mother. She called me an hour later to yell at me and I had to explain myself. And now his whole side of the family is arguing with each other about it. Even his mom and dad are fighting about it. I just feel like this whole thing has gotten way too out of control and I may be the jerk for starting all this family drama. So am I the jerk? Oh, I won't be honest, I'm very conflicted about this one. On the one hand, I completely see where she's coming from. You want to enjoy your vacation and you don't feel you can do that with him there acting the way he does. It's not as if you haven't tried, you've done it several times and it's just never worked out. He's miserable the entire time, so why would he want to go anyway? However, from your husband's side, I do feel like this is one of those situations where that little voice in the back of your head creeps up. While everything may be going well and he wants to trust you 100%, there's always that little bit of doubt, especially in a situation like this where we know a lot of people go on vacation to have some fun on the side, let's say. The thought of this is probably terrible terrifying him and that's why he's kind of acting the way he's acting. Obviously there's supposed to be a level of trust there and again I'm sure he does trust you but that voice though. This one's a difficult situation and I really don't have a clear answer either way. The ideal situation, you both go on the vacation together, he recognizes that you're trying to have a good time and he's kind of acting like a baby and sucks it up and tries to enjoy himself. But who knows what the odds of that are. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you guys next time.